Climate Science 2. In this episode, we look at cloud formation and the transfer of latent heat into the atmosphere. Some politicians express scepticism of the science of climate change. Firstly, I'm not a climate scientist, but an ordinary citizen. The aim of this set of videos is to perform a check on the climate science by producing simple models with calculations that would fit onto the back of an envelope that will give us an insight into the science and the ability to verify the science or find otherwise. Just to outline where I'm going with this video, the amount of rain that falls on the ground must equal the amount of water that condenses in a cloud. Condensing water vapour releases latent energy. So we're going to calculate the amount of energy that is transported by water evaporating from the ground, rising as water vapour to be released into the cloud layer upon condensation. Modelling clouds in an energy flow diagram is all about the movement of energy. We are then going to produce an update of our single layer greenhouse gas model from my previous video. That includes the energy of water vapour evaporating and condensing. This will show up as a single arrow on the diagram. I found this value for the average global precipitation on the web, 984 millimetres per year. Now I'm going to convert this to millimetres per second by dividing by 365 days in a year, 24 hours to the day, 60 minutes to the hour and 60 seconds to the minute. We get a rate of rainfall, denoted H for height, of 3.12 by 10 raised to the power of minus 5 millimetres per second. Converting the rate of rainfall H from millimetres a second to decimetres a second, we divide by a factor of 10 raised to the power of 2. Now I'm going to convert this value to that of a volume of water falling on a square metre of ground. I'm using the units of cubic decimetres as a cubic decimeter of water is the definition of mass in the metric system. So that is for convenience. A litre is a cubic decimeter. By definition, a litre of water weighs one kilogram at its maximum density. This value is accurate enough for our purposes over the temperature range on the Earth's surface. So 3.12 by 10 to the minus 5 cubic decimeters per second equates to 3.12 by 10 to the minus 5 kilograms of precipitation per second or 0.0312 grams per second. The specific latent heat is the energy required to change the state of a substance, solid to liquid or liquid to gas, without changing its temperature. It's expressed as energy per unit mass. The formula L for latent heat equals Q divided by M where Q is the heat energy and M is the mass. Rearranging the formula we get Q for energy equals the specific latent heat multiplied by the mass. The power or rate of heat energy supplied to the atmosphere from the condensation of water vapour in the atmosphere is QR and that is equal to the specific latent heat L multiplied by the rate of mass condensing in the atmosphere MR. The latent heat released from water condensing at 0 degrees Celsius is 2500 joules per gram. So for our 0.0312 grams of water condensing each second into a square metre of atmosphere, the rate of supply of latent heat is 78 watts per metre squared, a watt being a joule of energy released every second. In my last video, we looked at a model with a single layer of greenhouse gas. In this model, we've added the transfer of latent heat from the condensation of water vapour and the formation of clouds. In our model, the yellow ball and red arrow represents the radiation from the sun after reflected radiation has been removed. That is a reduction due to the albedo effect. From my previous video, 
S was calculated to be 240 watts per metre squared. The green bar at the bottom represents the Earth's surface. It has a temperature of Te of 288 degrees Kelvin. Radiation from the Earth is shown by the green arrows. The horizontal grey bar represents the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. These gases have a temperature Ta. Radiation from the greenhouse gas layer is shown by the grey arrows. The purple line represents the transfer rate of latent heat to the atmosphere. We've just calculated this to be 78 watts per metre squared. The additional details in this slide come from my previous video. But in summary, G is the black body radiation of the ground, A is the black body radiation of the greenhouse gas layer, Epsilon E is the emissivity and absorptivity of the ground, and Epsilon A is the emissivity and absorptivity of the greenhouse gas layer. For equilibrium, the energy in to the greenhouse gas layer must equal the energy out. That's by definition. This energy balance equation is shown in the blue box. In the lower highlighted box is the energy balance equation for the Earth's surface. We're going to use our energy balance equations to calculate the emissivity and temperature of the greenhouse gas layer required to produce a surface temperature of 288 degrees Kelvin. The first and second lines are our energy balance equations from the previous diagram. The third and fourth are the Stefan Boltzmann black body radiation formulas for the ground and the greenhouse gas layer. Then we can solve from the simultaneous equations to obtain an expression for epsilon A and Ta. Then substituting the Earth's emissivity of 0 0.98, the Stefan Boltzmann constant of 5.67 by 10 to the minus 8, and the surface temperature of the Earth of 288 degrees Kelvin, we obtain values for the emissivity of the atmosphere and its temperature. The emissivity, epsilon A, is 0 0.96 and the temperature, Ta, is 253 degrees Kelvin. Here we have the calculated values put back onto our model. We've found that this model has been able to be solved mathematically to handle the inclusion of energy transfer associated with cloud formation, but in reality an emissivity of 96% for the Earth's greenhouse gases, that is the ones that we have, is unrealistic. The solution to this dilemma will be found in my next video when we consider the effect of the lapse rate.